everyone. Welcome to Networking Live number two. Uh, I'm Mark Neese with Sync Lab Media, and we are fortunate to have Mr. Jeff McKissick stop by the studio today to have a Networking Live. All right. That's amazing how that works. <laughs> So this is basically like a one-to-one, -one, except mm -hmm. it's going to be a one-sided one-to-one, so I'm not really sure what that makes it. Whose side does it favor? <laughs> Hopefully yours. Oh, okay. Then that's okay. great. Okay. So we're just going to have a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. um, this is basically meant to replicate like the types of questions, the type of information, conversation that people would have during a one-to-one, -one, which ah. we both know is very important Critical. in networking. Critical. Uh, there's a lot more to networking than just going and showing up at a meeting. No. Go figure, right? So, uh, and a unique perspective today, Jeff actually started the group that uh, we are both still attending. What was it, like 12 years ago or yeah, something, something like, like that? Uptown Netweavers. Yeah. Um, and that's the first networking group that I actually ever went to and attended. I didn't know that. Yes, wow. it is. Yeah. I'm honored. <laughs> And uh, I, you know, I was, I, I was mortified the first day that I walked <laughs> into that room. Uh, and uh, those of you that know me, I, like I'm, I'm, you know, helping run the group now. Yeah. And, and Jeff is an innocent. That's what's so funny about Jeff, this. Jeff's an innocent bystander. Uh, no, he's a great yes, participant in, in the group. But so really, this is about promoting the activity of having one to ones and really learning <laughs> more about people. Got it more so than their business. Yeah. We're going we're, we're gonna to talk about business very mm -hmm. briefly, but this mm -hmm. is really more just to learn about people and develop those relationships. Got because it. as you like to say, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. There you go. I so, didn't coin it, but I constantly re re right. reiterate it. So one of the ways to do that is to get to know about people's background, mm -hmm. you know, commonalities, you know, things. And, and you have a very, very interesting background. Yeah. Um, so, born and raised in Florida, yes. small town in Florida. A little fishing town just south of Tallahassee. Right. And uh, you really gravitated toward magic when, yes. you were, when you were growing up as a kid. Tell, yes. tell us a little bit about that and, and kind of, you know, how, how did that start? Well, it started because my cousin, my dad was the last of eight children. And so, I, when I tell people my first cousin was the same age as my father, that sounds weird. Do you realize the age span there of being the last of eight? Same in our family. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So my cousin, who lived in Los Angeles, he was an attorney. He was actually the attorney. He was an attorney on the um, Charles Manson case, the Patty Hearst case, the Sirhan Sirhan case. He handled a lot of very, very high visible cases wow. back in the day. But he was really into magic. And he was a member of the Magic Castle, and he did some pro bono work for Doug Henning, who was a famous magician at the time. And whenever he would visit our family in Florida, he would always, and I was just a kid, of course, show me magic. And I was just enthralled by what he would show me. Mm -hmm. And so it developed that interest. And that interest started around kindergarten, but about third or fourth grade, I started picking things up. My parents bought me my first little magic kit for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it started there, and it just kept progressing. But to the point of what we're talking about today, when people say, how did you get started in public speaking? It was actually magic growing up and doing that from really about fifth grade through early college when mm -hmm. I was performing not to kids, but mostly I was performing to adults. Well, nothing's going to get you more kind of hardened to that immediate feedback of an audience than like trying to perform a magic trick. Well, right? and it <laughs> also teaches you improvisation because yeah. let's face it, not all the time do things go as planned when right. you're performing an effect as well. You had to recover it quickly. Yeah. It also taught you to plan out many times back then. It came with scripts that you would learn right. for the trick. Mm -hmm. So I always had confidence because I knew exactly what I was going to say when I got in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. So now you combine that with the improvisation aspect and see that I've been a public speaker for 35 years. Mm -hmm. You see how one led to the other very naturally yeah. and organically. And one of the cool things that you would know if you attended our Tuesday morning well, group yeah. is that very frequently when Jeff has an opportunity to do one of his spotlight presentations, it involves magic and yeah. actually some very, very interesting, intricate, and very impressive tricks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I got to say, though, yeah. that someone several years ago pointed out to me, said, Jeff, so much of what you do in business really has to do with magic. And I've developed seminars around that because criminals and con artists, which is kind of what I talk about, mm -hmm. also use misdirection, illusion, and accomplices. Yep. So one dovetails beautifully into the other. And mm -hmm. several of the seminars I do, one called Hocus Focus for military or rather law enforcement security people, 
talk about that and mm -hmm. how things that they should look for when they're being misdirected or people are creating illusions right. they need to be able to see through. So again, perfect, perfect segue into what I do today. Yeah. So um, another thing that I think is really interesting is your experience with different types of like martial arts and oh, yeah. and even being hired as a consultant to help with like fight choreography mm -hmm. and and those types of things what what led from magic to like martial art like where did that happen i tell people in, in your, all my your, hobbies have to do with m music magic <laughs> martial arts as I, right. I got my last name's mckissick so i right, guess it's right. just all about the letter m right so like sesame street brought to you today by the letter m <laughs> that came about from the old david carradine series kung fu when it came out on tv and we're dating again, ourselves now well yeah, yeah, like, no one else will <laughs> okay. date you have to date yourself right, right. so I was watching that series, Kung Fu, as a kid, and I grew up, again, in a little fishing town. Nothing was around, but my parents, just to pacify me, bought me a karate gi for Christmas. Mm. And my mom tucked it away in a cedar chest thinking, okay, he wore it a couple of times, that's the end of that. Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> as soon as I got to college, I started at Florida State. I took judo there, and then I also took taekwondo off campus. I didn't really continue much after a semester or two of judo, but I did in Taekwondo, got my black belt there, transferred to Oral Roberts University up in Tulsa, got my black belt in karate there, short and rude. Graduated, met a gentleman who was very well known in the martial arts community named Robert Bussey, who lives down here now in Dallas. He was the first man that brought ninjutsu from Japan mm. to the US, the art of the ninja. Yeah. And so I studied under him, got a black belt there, and have worked with um, some of the guys that trained Christian Bale, Liam Neeson, Daniel Craig, Tom Cruise for a lot of their fight sequence and all, Andy and Husto who have a system, well now it's called the Defense Lab over in the UK, mm -hmm. and met them through a series of events after they were working on The Dark Knight. I was actually on the set for The Dark Knight when that was being filmed because I was interviewing them for Black Belt Magazine, an article I was writing at the mm -hmm. time. So I've spoken at the National Martial Arts Super Show several times, uh, written for tra several trade magazines like Black Belt Magazine, Martial Arts Success Magazine. So there again, mm -hmm. something that's obviously parlays very well into what I do today. So everything yeah. I've done yeah. has been a stepping stone and a culmination of everything that's been done before. So do you think that's why you gravitated to starting that business with, you know, when you, when you decided to, to be an entrepreneur and start your own business? Do you think that that background is what led you to Defense by Design? Or do you think that it was just that you decided that you wanted to do something security, you know, workplace safety related, and you just happen to have that background. Well, and the way that happened, and I guess if I can kind of move the needle forward a little bit, when I started working, at, just graduated from college up at ORU, I came home, I was watching TV one night, and a gentleman came on who was being interviewed, his name is Ken Wooden, he was an investigative reporter and producer for 2020, 60 Minutes and NBC News. He'd interviewed Bundy, Lucas, Gacy, a lot of the names we know in crime history. Mm. But when he had a chance to, at, to sit down across the table and interview them, he asked them a question no one had asked them before. Instead of asking, why did you do it, and try to get inside their head and psychoanalyze them, he said, I don't care why you did it. I want to know how you did it. Uh. How did you get people to trust you? How did you lure the people that you did, not with a gun or a knife, but a good story? Right. How did right. you do it? How did you con people out of millions of dollars? How? How did yeah. you do it? Uh -huh. And that is not at all physical related. Right. So, sure. yeah. yeah, I mean, while martial arts self defense had something to do with it, I was absolutely fascinated hearing this man talk on television. And at 22, when you have no fear, <laughs> and it was also pre internet, I hand wrote a letter with my phone number scratched at the bottom thinking, this man will never call me, but you never know till you know. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, I was staying at my parents' home because again, I just graduated from college and I didn't have a job on the horizon at that time. He called me hmm. and said, I want you to meet you. So my dad put me on a plane. He lured me successfully to Vermont <laughs> in the fall. It was beautiful up there that time of year. We hit it off and the next right. six to eight years, I worked as his apprentice. He had me teach his program, Child Lures, in public schools and over the First three years out of college, I spoke to 250,000 elementary, hmm. junior high, and high school students. Interesting. Now, the 40, 50,000 adults in either teacher and professional in service or hospital in service uh -huh. or others. So, by the time I was 25, I already spoke in front of over 300,000 in live audiences. So, baptism by far, but yet there again, it all kind of parlayed into what I do today mm -hmm. and how all that's transpired. And in fact, what we did with Ken Wooden. It was incredible what he did with children, but I saw an incredible market for the adult market. And so back in 2000, I founded Defense by Design. It really 
focused on the adult market. I still tip of the hat always will promote mm -hmm. Child Lures because I love that program. I think it's yeah. the best one out there. Yes, that's biased opinion, but I talked to 250,000 kids. So yeah, <laughs> right. I have a, a right to my bias. Yeah. But for the adults who didn't get the lessons as kids, there's still a need for adult education today. So there again, that's kind of where I'm at at this well, point. Well, even, I mean, as and again, as as those who would do harm get more and more sophisticated, they then, <laughs> then the rest of us have to also become more and more aware and adept at, at recognizing those things and being able to react appropriately. Well, I only right. halfway joke with people. In fact, I have a seminar called, Are You Safer Than a Sixth Grader? Mm -hmm. Instead of, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah. And the reason I did that is because if you think about it, there's really not much teaching safety after sixth grade. After you've grown out of talking dogs, puppets, jingles, and coloring books, mm -hmm. it's almost like, okay, well, you're on your own now. Yeah. There's nothing junior high, nothing high school, nothing college, and certainly nothing really in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So while, to your point, your criminals are walking around constantly fine-tuning what they do in their craft, mm -hmm. you have most of the adult population walking around with about a sixth grade level of safety and security knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing I think it's interesting that you mention uh, frequently is a lot of those, once you learn some of those things and practice them, mm -hmm. a lot of those things translate from the physical world to the digital world that, that we're oh, in sure. now as well, right? Because you start seeing like certain patterns, right? And things oh, yeah. like well, that. Well, I mean, yeah. it's the whole idea of it's not a gun or knife, it'll get you. It's a good story. Yeah. What is phishing scams? Right, yeah. What about those phone calls that we all get? What about right. the emails that solicit us to click this link? Yeah. It's all based on a good story. It's creating an illusion right. and misdirection, possibly even through accomplices that something was forwarded under someone else's name by, mm -hmm. without their knowledge. Yeah. Again, all of these things kind of culminate. Even mm -hmm. though criminals' methods may not change, human behavior remains the same. Yeah. And the way you go about enticing human participation, mm -hmm. that hasn't changed much over millennia. Right, right. Um, so we're kind of like going to like wind things down a little bit, but uh, I do want to give you uh, an opportunity to talk maybe about a few opportunities coming up soon that you have. I know that uh, right now you are um, promoting a like a mother-daughter oh, yes. um, workshop. Yes for uh, young women who are going off to college and yep. like leaving home for the first time. And I, I think it's really interesting that you're, that you're pairing up mother and daughter, one, mm -hmm. so that the, the parent knows what you're teaching and also knows what to look out for, but there's obviously gonna be things that a mother and daughter are gonna talk about, talk about right? <laughs> that they may not be talking about with the father, right? right? So, right. so tell me a little bit about like what the focus is of, of that workshop and or, you know, a, the, the, the main kind of principles or, or takeaways that you're hoping somebody walks away with. Yeah, it's, it's a two hour seminar event. In hour one, we talk about external concerns. So what about when your daughter or the young lady is, she's going off to college, what if she's working off campus, mm -hmm. comings and goings? What if she's living in an apartment rather than a dorm? Comings and goings. What if she's got roommates? Because sometimes it brings dramas in. Comings and goings. Mm -hmm. What about they're taking night classes? Comings and goings. Spring mm -hmm. break, fall break, going over with friends to Europe over the summer to backpack. Mm -hmm. Comings and goings. So everything about the frat first parties. hour. The frat <laughs> parties. <laughs> yeah. Comings and goings. Right. The second hour focuses <clears throat> more on relationships because unfortunately domestic violence doesn't just happen in marriages. It happens early on in dating and we're seeing it more on college campuses. Mm -hmm both on the physical abusive side, but also even sometimes fiscal exploitation. I know personally of situations where young women who came from families with money were courted by some really great looking guy mm -hmm. who ended up siphoning them off. They saw that young lady as a free meal ticket and mm -hmm. played to her ego in order to get this. So mm -hmm. what are the behavior patterns mm -hmm. that these young ladies should look for, either for physical reasons mm -hmm. or fiscal reasons? That's the focus of the second hour. So it's two hours of really teaching psychological profiling of both people and situations. And mm -hmm. of all the seminars I do, it's probably one of the top ones I'm most proud that I've put together because mm -hmm. it's A, so relevant, but B, so needed. Well, I mean, it's just, it, it, it is so needed. And, um, you know, particularly with the recent kind of, you know, cultural environment that we're in, the whole Me Too, you know, movement, all of, all of that, I mean, there's, 
um, it, it's just such important information and, and you know, can actually literally save, sa save, save someone's life. And, a, and you there know. are a future. In other words, sure, yeah, right. it's yeah. save their life, but, but also of all the sure. heartache and yeah. the jadedness and all the other things that come into play. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, of all the seminars, there is one of the ones I'm most proud of. So uh, if, if someone wants to find out about that specifically, what's the landing site for that specifically? College Safety dot now n o w dot site okay we'll put, we'll put that link up so yeah, if somebody that. wants to go and, and see that specifically and find out where you're doing that yeah some um, of my other seminars are workplace related or mm -hmm. again a lot of what I do now value add events where mostly insurance or financial companies have me train and mm -hmm. teach their people their clients this is one of those that really is hits a very very niche market it's the only one I really have that's geared towards youth mm -hmm. but again it's just because it's so needed. Right. Unfortunately, the colleges and universities out there are not preparing these young ladies. The high schools obviously don't know how. Right. So it's really incumbent upon the parents to seek out this type of training. I'm not mm. against your daughters learning to protect themselves physically or sure. firearms or whatever, but any of them, all of them, regardless of their physical restrictions or conscious, you know, like firearms, or whatever, everybody benefits from good information. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to wrap things up here. Yes. Again, really appreciate you coming by today. Uh, last question is, who should uh, we be looking out for that are the best people to make introductions for you? Or if somebody is sitting here and oh, watching oh, this on okay. LinkedIn, because this mm -hmm. is a LinkedIn Live. Hey. So if somebody is watching this on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, obviously they can just go and connect with you directly. Please but, do. But who should in their network, their sphere of influence, who would be like the top two or three kind of targets that, that yeah. they should be looking for that they may be able to make an introduction. Yeah. And, and thank you yeah. for that. I would yeah. say on the business side, the B2B side, it would be, well, actually on those, if it's value add events, then again, insurance companies and financial firms are my top two people that and, and who is the me. person at those firms? Who Typically, be their business development or marketing, someone that would coordinate their value add events. Most of them already know that speak anyway, sure. their value add events. And then within the corporate world, when I do employee training, it would most likely be the HR director, but sometimes the risk manager, who is sometimes the de facto or de facto um, CFO of right. the company. So okay. either risk manager, CFO, or HR within that office training environment. Okay, awesome. You heard it directly from Jeff. Uh, if you have those people in your network, uh, please feel free to reach out to Jeff, make those direct introductions to him. Um, I mean, we've known each other for 12 years. 12, yeah, yeah 12 years Go now. I didn't and realize that was the yeah. first networking group you went to. Yeah, wow. it was. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, time flies, huh? Yeah. So, uh, and hopefully we fly with it. Get my, get my cane and I'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you so much for dropping by the studio sure. today. I appreciate the conversation. And, um, you know, we are looking forward to continue working with you on, on oh, yeah, a mul the, mul multitude of yeah, projects. Yeah, the whole other so. thing we didn't even get into is right. so much now is catering towards video. Yeah. So there's going to be some other projects coming up video related. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping in. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on this version of Networking Live. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you next time. Keep an eye out as soon as we go live. Uh, check it out and uh, see who we're going to talk to next time. We've got some really, really interesting people coming in. So Yeah, as opposed yeah. to me. <laughs> All right, Thanks. take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.